Welcome again. Uh, I'm Dale Horian at Lampa Manufacturing, and I'm standing in front of actually a little older Vapor Fire 100 wood furnace. This one's probably about 10 years old. And one of the things, I really should have done this video back probably in September, but now we're in December. And I want to go through your first fire up of a new Vapor Fire 100. And this also applies to anybody doing a first fire up for a new burning season also. So uh, let's, let's start with some basics. Now, this one has been fired before, so those of you that are doing a new fire up for a new season, I'm gonna start by pulling, if there's any remaining ashes in here, I'm gonna pull them to the front. Hopefully you wouldn't have any ashes left from last year. And then I'm just gonna flick them down through the, the ash grate. And once I've done that, uh, we're ready to fire up. But then the other thing I'm going to show you is down here is the ash pan. And I'm old, so I tend not to bend over that much. Once the ashes come down, I always push them back. And if you just push them back until you, you feel them hit the other ashes back there. And you will. I find that I can go a full week 24-7 on one ash pan. So once you're... Uh, firebox is ready to fire up. The, the other thing you really need to do, the first thing is to check your chimney. The, whether the vapor fire performs or doesn't perform is primarily going to be related to how effective your chimney is. Now we have a metal chimney, single wall stove pipe, and then we go to class A insulated stainless steel. Right here is a barometric damper that controls how, many dra how much draft is actually going to the furnace. And this will come, we provide the damper with the furnace. This is what the damper looks like. It comes in a box and the damper has a little weight here. And you can loosen it and move the weight left and right. So when it comes, it's usually gonna be set on number eight. Now, if you have a two-story house, you're probably gonna have a 25 to 35 foot chimney you're most likely going to have to set this on number three, um, which is there's just a little slash mark between the two and the four. If you have a one story ranch style house, you're probably going to have to set it on number four. And you measure that on the left edge of this little silver knob. Now, when you install this, you have to rotate this thing and use a level until you find a point where this snout here is actually level. And then, once you do that, then you can rotate this part until your little flap is level to the ground. And then there's screws in there that you put on here and you lock it in place. Barometric damper is really critical to the operation of your furnace. Now, when you're firing up your furnace, you can sometimes hit what's called an over temp alarm and that will be the same beep from your computer. You'll hear a little beep when you first flick it on but when you have an over temp alarm it goes continuous now. Now we shouldn't really call it an alarm, it's just a notification so don't panic if you hear it. The furnace has already taken over control if, if you hear that alarm. And what there's four things that will cause the furnace to go into an over temp alarm. One is you have this set, the barometric set, on too high of a number. So if you have a two-story house and uh, if you start out, take it out right out of the box, it's going to be set on number eight and you install it that way, that's way too tight. It's going to suck way too much draft through the furnace. It's going to turn us into a blast furnace and it's going to hit over temp. So if this is on too high of a number, it'll set off an over temp. Another thing that will set off an over temp is if your firewood is cut in too small of little pieces, almost like kindling. That will set off an over temp. Another thing that will set off an over temp is if your firewood is too dry. If you're under 10%, uh, it will set off an over temp. Now just because your firewood's too dry doesn't mean you can't burn it. What you need to do is you need to go to a lower number. So if you're on 4, take it down to 3 or take it down to 2 and you should be able to burn drier wood. And the fourth thing that will cause an over temp is if you go to reload your furnace and you have too big of a coal bed 
and you throw your wood in on top of a great big coal bed, you're going to get a bottom up burn and that's going to set off an over temp alarm. <laughs> your first time you fire up every year or the first time you fire up your furnace when it's brand new, your chimney is going to be cold. And uh, a cold chimney does not want to create draft. Now water vapor is a byproduct of combustion, so there's going to be a fair amount of water vapor going up your chimney. When your chimney is cold, water vapor has a tendency to condense on the outside of the chimney and run back down. And down here in these adjustable joints, they often leak. And you can see I did it myself this last fall, this black crap here. And so I myself forgot. I usually find one of these old pie tins, a disposable pie tin, and set it under there. That way you catch any crap. And I should say, this doesn't apply just to a, a vapor fire furnace. This applies to every furnace, every wood stove, if you have a sharp angle here. Because your chimney will, uh, until the chimney gets hot inside, you will have some condensation coming down. And your chimney is not going to draft well until you have heat in your chimney. And, and now this happens to be a class A chimney with a single wall here in class A. The same thing applies for a masonry chimney. Now a masonry chimney on the outside of the house um, is okay, it's not great. A class A chimney on the outside of the house actually is going to draft better. The very best chimney is a class A up inside the center of the house or somewhere inside the house. And second best would be a masonry in the center of the house. So once you've made sure your chimney is ready and your barometric damper is ready, uh, now it's time to load the furnace and make sure if you have a brand new furnace that all the stuff that we shipped inside is out of the furnace so it's an empty fire box. Make sure your fire brick are in place, your grate is in place, your ash can is in place here. This here is a smoke flap on a brand new furnace. This will be silver. This is actually stainless steel and a lot of people ask if this has to be here. This uh, is actually a smoke flap. And it is important that it stays in place and when you reload the wood it's easy for it to sometimes get caught up you need to make sure this always comes down because there's a thermal couple right right in above here that measures temperature uh, in the firebox and this if it's up will interfere with that giving an accurate reading so next this is a front to back burn furnace so we want to light the front of the logs and leave the back of the logs not burning so we're going to start you can either put paper in the front or being up here in the north woods of Minnesota, here's my favorite stuff is I like birch bark. And you can use a little of each if you want. So I normally just throw the paper right in here at the front, a little birch bark. And then a little kindling, just some smaller pieces of wood. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, this is how I light the furnace. This is not what our manual said. So, but this is going to be your easiest way. Just get your uh, paper in there, your little bit of kindling, and then I'm going to throw a few pieces of firewood in. Now your, your first two rows, you only want back about one inch from the front of the furnace. If you have short firewood, 16 inch, Make sure that it's only back an inch from the front. And I'm going to put a minimum of three pieces in. As it gets colder, yeah, go ahead and fill her up to the ceiling. So I'm just going to do it like this. Now, notice, I've got the ash pan door open. Now, I'm going to next, I'm going to turn the on switch on the computer. That's just a little toggle switch. I turn it on. You heard the beep. That says it's got power. And if you look at the control now, it'll show a capital C. That means it's cold. So now that we have the wood in here, uh, we can go ahead and light. Um, and so I'm just going to light my paper and my birch. That'll light pretty easy here. And then you can see it's just barely going. I'm just going to close the door. And leave the ash pan door open and now you'll see over here on the computer this still has a capital C it's still cold 
And so we're just gonna leave it. It'll probably take five, maybe even 10 minutes uh, before this capital C goes off. So I'm gonna time it now and we'll cut and we'll come back as soon as this uh, changes. Okay, it's been only four minutes since we fired up and you'll notice that the computer went from a capital C to a number three. Now notice when that's on a number three, if you look down here at the draft control, the flap in there is wide open. That's maximum air going in for combustion. When this goes up here, goes down to number two, this flap will close part way so it's only open a half an inch. When this goes down to number one, this flap will only be opened about between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. And then eventually this will go down to a small C and that means that this flap will be closed completely. So now that this is on a number three, now I can go ahead and close my ash pan door. And if I want, I can walk away. But let me show you. Now the reason I did my firing this way is you're gonna have a cold chimney and if you leave your firebox door open to watch it, you're gonna have all kinds of smoke coming out into your house or your basement. But you notice the way I did it, I lit my fire just barely, left the ash pan door open, and that fire took off by itself just great. No smoke in your house, no smoke in your basement. And close your ash pan door and you should be good. Now I will mention, those of you who are firing up a brand new stove for the first time, your furnace will give off some smoke. Uh, there is uh, fresh paint on the furnace. It'll give off a little bit of a chemically smell. It's totally safe to breathe, but your first time you fire it up, you might notice here, I opened my window. And if you have windows in your basement or garage or wherever, you might want to have some fresh air. And if you're really sensitive to smoke, you might want to have a fan handy just the first time. And I, again, I mentioned this is the first time because there's going to be some, uh, some paint. And even though we clean all the steel, there might be some residual oils and stuff on there. Now that the fire has gone to number three and I close the ash pan door, now if you open slowly, you see, oops, there comes smoke out. I don't have enough heat going up my chimney yet. But, um, okay, but that fire is going really strong. So the key is once you, once you light it and uh, get your ash pan door shut, just leave it shut for a while. Uh, that furnace is gonna take off and heat like crazy. Now I do need to mention that your blower will not come on right away. The blower won't come on until your plenum gets up to a certain temperature. And over here, when this furnace was built, we had the low limit thermostat mounted right here in this box. It was mounted right here. We have to do that for the federal government. But if we say if your plenum is over 18 inches, you want to move that low limit up on your plenum, up towards the front of the plenum and on the side. If you don't have room here because of ducts, you can move it around to the front. But this is the hottest part of the plenum here. Your high limit thermostat stays down low and towards the back of the plenum, this is the coolest part of the plenum. Don't mess with this one. This one is a safety device and is not used the way other furnaces use this. Okay, inside this box up here is our low limit thermostat and that's just what's called a snap disc thermostat and it is adjustable. I have this one set at 105 degrees right now so when the air in the plenum gets up to 105 degrees, that will tell the blower to turn on. This is the only on off switch for the blower. So if, if you, now when you start up with a brand new cold furnace, it normally takes me about 45 minutes before this thing will kick the blower on. And that's because there's so much cold mass in this furnace. All that fire brick, all that steel, it's so well insulated, it's gonna take a long time to get all, everything up to temp. Right now, this is still cold to the touch. There's no heat here yet. Um, once this gets to be 105 degrees, and I need to emphasize this is air temperature inside, not surface temperature, then this will turn the blower on and it'll start on low speed. Now in other videos I mentioned that you want to have between 180 and 200 square inches of ducting coming off your plenum. Now if you're going to have one round duct coming off, you need a minimum of a 16 inch. This is a 12 inch and a six inch, and then we have to be able to make up and have enough square inches, we had to add a register to the front here. 
So we make sure we have at least 180 square inches of warm air or what they call supply air. Now in a lot of applications, you're also going to hook your cold air return to the blower in the back. We didn't here. We're just drawing our cold air out of the room. And let me show you what we can do there. So many of you are going to have your furnace in your basement or a garage. Uh, if you're in a garage, this doesn't work well, but if you're in a basement, it works quite well. If you're drawing the cold air right off the floor, it can be 20 degrees colder than air right at this level right here because concrete transfers cold really well. So we've actually made a metal box around the back end of the blower so it's drawing the air from above the blower. That way your, uh, the air going in is much warmer. And then your, your blower filters are right here. Just make sure you get those serviced from time to time. Okay, you'll notice, okay, it's been about another 10 minutes. The control just went from three down to two. And now our damper is only open a half an inch. So it's working as it's supposed to. Now, one of the questions a lot of people have is how do I control the temperature in my house? Um, this knob here, you can turn it all the way up. If I turn it all the way up, you'll see it went back to number three because um, I'm saying, okay, I want more BTUs of heat energy in the house. So by turning that, this is, this is the demand. So I want more heat. So it's, it went back to number three. The damper opens up, says, okay, I'm gonna pump maximum heat out. This tells the furnace how many BTUs of heat to produce for your house. So on a day like today, which is actually fairly warm, probably about 30 degrees, you'd probably leave this turned all the way to the lowest. Um, if, a day, you know, if, uh, if it was 20 below, I'd probably have it at about three quarters. Now, if you're starting brand new and your house is kind of chilly and you want to get your house up to temp, leaving it all the way down is not going to do much. It's only going to put out about 10,000 BTUs. So if you've got a cold house, let's say it's still 30 degrees, but your house is only 60 degrees inside, Crank that sucker wide open, and now she's going to put out maximum BTUs of heat and try to get your house up to temp quick. Uh, once your house is up to temp, then you can come back down and set it based on the day. Now, notice we've been another three or four minutes, and based on our low requirement, it has gone down to number one. Our damper is now only open about an eighth of an inch. In a little while, this will go down to a small C, and then that damper will be closed and the furnace will be running on pilot air only. That'll be these two openings right here and one on the door. And then there's two little openings down here. And that'll be all of the air for the furnace, nothing through the primary damper. Okay, so now the furnace has been going about 15 minutes and you can see I can open the firebox door without smoke coming out. Uh, it's basically burning at the front of the, of the logs and uh, the, the damper is down on number one. It'll go to small C any minute here. Uh, if you look up above here, which you can't right now, uh, that's the gasification chamber. Up in that chamber, we've got to keep the temperature over 950 and between 950 and about 1300 degrees to completely burn all the, the uh, smoke. And smoke is unburnt uh, wood fuel. Now, when you're first lighting up your furnace the first time and everything's cold, I do have to mention that you will see smoke coming out of your chimney. This furnace has got to get fully up to temp before all that smoke goes away. So it can take, on your first fire up, when everything's cold, it can take an hour, um, maybe even an hour and 15 minutes before everything gets up to temp and you go up to the chimney and there's absolutely nothing coming out of the chimney. Again, I have to mention now, if it's below 32 degrees, you're going to get white water vapor. Water vapor is white and billowy and it just kind of dissipates. Wood smoke is normally heavier than air. It generally comes out the chimney and kind of follows down the roof line and generally comes down to ground level. And it's usually kind of blue in color. Uh, if you see that after about an hour and a half, uh, then probably give us a call. Something is probably adjusted wrong. But uh, you, if it's below 32, you'll see water vapor. Above 32, you should see nothing coming out of the chimney at all. Okay, we also, besides the, the control on the side of the furnace, I kind of call that your rough, uh, rough adjustment or coarse adjustment. Your fine adjustment is your wall thermostat. And this is a Honeywell unit. Uh, you've seen them around for 100 years. 
it's just the round analog Honeywell unit. Now I should point out that this one says Honeywell, but the box, they're changing the branding. The box says Honeywell, but it also says their new name somewhere here, oh, Residio. Uh, Honeywell for a lot of their home products is going to the name Residio. We use all Honeywell products on our furnaces, but if you see Residio, it's the same thing. It is a Honeywell product. Um, so this is your wall thermostat. You do need to have a separate wall thermostat for the vapor fire. You cannot join it in with another thermostat for a separate furnace. It needs its own thermostat. Now what you need to understand about this thermostat is this really only changes the blower speed. Uh, so let's say that you have your house, the temperature set to be 70 degrees, uh, or let's say 72, but like this thermostat, it's only on 70. This thing's gonna tell the blower to jump into high speed. Once your house gets up to 72, then this is gonna tell the blower to jump back to low speed. It doesn't tell the blower to shut off like your gas, propane, or oil furnace but it's gonna go down to a very low level and just continue to pump warm air in at just a nice, even, steady flow. So you don't get that warm, cold, warm, cold cycle of gas, propane, and oil furnaces. And then if, if your house drops a little bit, it might ask the blower to jump back to high speed for a little bit. Uh, the reason we do this is on low speed, you should not hear the furnace running in your house. So that's, that's kind of it for starting up your furnace brand new the first time or restarting it for a second or 12th or 30th year. Uh, and yes, we've got furnaces out there that have been running over 40 years. As a matter of fact, Daryl Lampas, I think this is his 48th year on his vapor fire. Um, but if you do have any questions above and beyond this, please feel free to call us. Uh, but we hope that going through this, you'll have a, a comfort for going and starting it up the first time. Uh, but feel free to call us. We also have a lot of other videos covering specific different parts of the furnace online. So thank you for your time.